One of my favorite adhesives that I use for bookbinding and for conservation is a starch paste. Starch pastes are really great because they have a long working time, they hold a lot of moisture, they're reversible, so if I decide I don't like it, it's easy to take it off, but I do have to prepare it and get it ready to go. It's not something that you can just get out of the bottle. I'd like to show you how to prepare a starch paste using a few simple tools, something that you probably already have in your kitchen. We're going to be working with a wheat starch paste. Um, there are a couple of different brands. Uh, I like the Zin Shofu that you can get at Washi Arts and at Talus and some other suppliers. Um, it's a Japanese starch paste, which is really great to work with. Uh, it's really well refined and makes a nice material to work with. I also work with the Atex P which is less expensive, which makes it nice, but it's still a pure starch that's great for conservation. In order to prepare this, we need our starch. We need some deionized or distilled water. We want it as clean, as pure as possible. We want some sort of a measuring device, a whisk, and then a double boiler. So this double boiler is a small camping double boiler that I got years ago, and then some sort of a hot plate or a stove. So once I have all my materials together, I can dive in and get started making the paste. Now the proportions I like to work with are one to seven. I think it makes a nice, easy paste. I'm gonna stir it up fairly well. I'm gonna remove some of the moisture from the cooking process. Um, you can always work with slightly different proportions depending on where, when you are and the type of paste you're trying to make. I'm gonna take my measuring spoon and I'm gonna measure out a couple of tablespoons of starch. Now, I use this primarily for conservation and book repair. And so I don't make a lot of paste at any one time. Um, but if you're working with maybe some paste papers or something much larger, then you could work with bigger proportions. I'm then going to take my two portions, and I'm going to do 14 portions of water. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stir that up for a moment. We want to get rid of any clumps. I'm working with cold water to start with. If any of you have made a sauce, you know you want to go ahead and get that starch worked in with cold water before you get the heat on. Now, once I've mixed it all up, use my whisk to make it a little bit more uniform. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let that sit aside. I really want those um, starch molecules to absorb some of that water and to get ready for cooking. It's really going to speed up our cooking time and make it much nicer paste in the end. So I'll just go ahead and put that aside. We'll come back and we'll get ready to start cooking. So I've let my starch soak for about half an hour now so it's ready to go. I've now put it on my double boiler with the water below and my whisk ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stir this for about 20 minutes. It starts out as a kind of a white milky consistency and it's gonna get translucent as it cooks up as well as thickens. So I'm gonna stir this for about 20 minutes. It takes a few minutes for it to start to work and then um, we'll be able to take this off and continue the process. You can see here that it's kind of a white milky consistency and pretty thin. So we're just gonna leave this to cook. My hot plate's starting to get warm. And I'm just gonna continue to stir again for about those 20 minutes. And we'll just let it thicken up. So the water underneath is coming to a boil. We're not there yet. It's still pretty white. It's still pretty thin, so we'll just give it a little more time and let it cook up. I find that having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea nearby helps pass the time as I'm stirring away. Still working on it. Just a few more minutes. So I see it's starting to lose a little bit of its whiteness. It's getting a little more translucent, darkening up a little bit. So we're just going to keep going until it thickens up. We're almost there. It's thickening up. It's not quite thick enough for me. 
just a little bit longer. I'm really looking for a consistency similar to a yogurt, uh, something that's got some body to it. So I'm just gonna keep going for a few more minutes, but we're on the final stretch. Okay, I think I'm about there. Either that or I'm just getting impatient with this. But I think it's pretty good. So it's cooked down, it's much thicker. And then I think I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn on my hot plate. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shift it over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove it from the heat. Okay. So once I've removed it from the heat, I can go ahead and keep stirring it. So I wanna make sure that it cools down and so that we still don't get any lumps. So ideally I'm gonna stir this for 20 minutes. If you had an automated stirring machine, that would come in handy. Or if you're not done with your cup of coffee, then you can just keep drinking away while you do this. So let me stir for a little bit longer and then we'll decant. I've stirred it up. I'm just gonna decant it into a container here. Get it nice and out. Try to keep as much as I can. Okay, so now this paste is ready to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave this probably for know, half an hour to cool down just out in the air. And then at that point I can put a lid on it and put it in my fridge. We wanna make sure that our paste is gelled in order to do the next step to strain it to make it uh, useful. I've let my paste cool down overnight so it's now become this nice kind of jelly. And with paste, it only really lasts about a week. So I'm gonna use this up over the next week. I'm gonna go ahead and throw away whatever's left and then I'll make a new batch. Now it's not very useful as this kind of brick of, of paste. So what I need to do is I need to strain it. You can use any number of things to strain paste. You can use silk, you can use window screening. I have here uh, inexpensive silk screen just from an art supply store. We need something that's gonna break up this big mass. So I have a container for my paste. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna decant some of this. So I'm just gonna pull a chunk of this out. And then what I'm gonna use is a spoon to kind of press it through. That's gonna break it up. We want it to be small and consistent in size. And what I can just do is scoop that up. Okay. And so I like to sieve this two or three times just to make sure I have everything broken up and there's no lumps left over. So give me a minute, I'll sieve it again, and then we'll come back and uh, get it to the right consistency. So I have my paste that's been strained out. It's still pretty thick, so I wanna make sure I get it down to a usable consistency. And all I need to do for that is to spray it with some water. So this is a nice Dahlia sprayer, but you can use um, kind of any sprayer you have. Again, I'm working with that distilled water. And I'm just going to add a little bit of moisture to the bottom. And then we'll start to work it in. So I'm trying to work it into the paste, make sure it's all incorporated and there's no loose moisture. So I'm just going to keep working. I'll add a little bit more.
So I like to make a consistency that's um, runny, but not too wet. So maybe uh, a heavy cream. So something with a little bit of thickness. Whatever moisture we have in this paste now has to come back out again. And so I'm very careful about how much water I'm introducing to the papers that I'm repairing. Okay. And I think that's good. So now my paste is ready. I'll take my repair uh, materials out and I'll be able to get to work. So I hope that helps you understand how to make paste and um, how it might be used for um, repairing your pop-ups. Thanks so much. So now my paste is ready. And so it's a nice consistency for me to brush out and to use. And I think it's going to be perfect for the repairs I have coming up. Um, I hope you try out using some paste. It's a great adhesive to use uh, and it's a lot of fun. Again, a few simple materials and you can really get some mixed up and ready for you. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope to see you next time.